Bonjour tout le monde. Merci Good afternoon, ici. everyone. Thank Je you for being here. I'm accompanied today by the Deputy Freeland, Prime Minister Freeland and Minister Joly and Anand. On est ici We're here today pour de la to talk about the situation in Ukraine, the unjustifiable de la attack by it's Russia of Ukraine is unacceptable. This morning, Ukrainians woke up to the brutal, terrifying reality of war. President Putin has launched a horrific, unprovoked attack on their country, a sovereign nation, including missile strikes in their capital, Kiev. He has needlessly put the lives of innocent people at risk, violated Russia's international treaties, and launched the greatest threat to European stability since World War II. Canada is unequivocal in our condemnation of Russia's unprovoked and unjustified attack on the sovereign, democratic state of Ukraine. President Putin's brazen disregard for international law, democracy, and human life are a massive threat to security and peace around the world. I just spoke a few minutes ago with President Zelensky. I told him that we are announcing strong action today and continue to stand with him and with the Ukrainian people. Earlier this morning, I met with G7 partners to coordinate our response. We're also working closely with NATO and our allies. Together, we have made clear that Russian violence, aggression, and violation of international law will not go unpunished. We stand united and steadfast in our support of Ukraine's sovereignty, and we stand in solidarity with the Ukrainian people's right to decide their own future in a free and democratic state. Mardi, on Tuesday, after President Putin's recognition of the so-called independent states of Donetsk and Luhansk, Canada announced an initial series of concerted sanctions. Canada's sanctions target those responsible for illegal actions in Russia, as well as two Russian banks supported by the state. Moreover, we've prohibited Canadians from buying Russian sovereign debt. It will be forbidden to participate in any financial transaction with the so-called independent states of Donetsk and Luhansk. We also announced the deployment of up to 460 additional Canadian forces troops to support Operation Reassurance under NATO and Today, to favor peace and security in Europe. reckless and dangerous military strike, we are imposing further severe sanctions. These sanctions will target 58 individuals and entities, including members of the Russian elite and their family members, as well as the Wagner Group and major Russian banks, among others. We will also sanction members of the Russian Security Council, including the Defense Minister, the Finance Minister, and the Justice Minister. In addition, Effectively, immediately, effective immediately, we are ceasing all export permits for Russia and cancelling existing permits. These sanctions are wide-reaching. They will impose severe costs on complicit Russian elites, and they will limit President Putin's ability to continue funding this unjustified invasion. Aujourd'hui, Today, in light of Ru Russia's reckless and dangerous military strike, we are imposing further severe sanctions. These sanctions are wide-reaching. They will bring about major sanctions for members of the Russian elite and will prevent President Putin from financing this unjustified attack. I want to be clear, Russia's attack against Ukraine is also an attack against democracy, international law, and freedom. Russia's attack on Ukraine is also an attack on democracy, on international law, on human rights, and on freedom. Russia's actions stand in direct opposition to the democratic principles that generations of Canadians have fought to protect.
Democracies and democratic leaders everywhere must come together to defend these principles and stand firmly against authoritarianism. Russia must immediately cease all hostile actions against Ukraine and withdraw all military and proxy forces from the country. Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected and the Ukrainian people, like all people, must be free to determine their own future. I want to be clear. Our quarrel is not with the people of Russia. It is with President Putin and Russian leadership that has enabled and supported this further invasion of Ukraine. La vérité. The truth is that Russia has been violating Ukraine's sovereignty for years. In 2014, it illegally annexed Crimea. Since then, it has never stopped arming democracy in Ukraine. And today, President Putin opened a new dark chapter of this story by launching a widespread these are deeply invasion. disturbing times for the international community and for people everywhere who care about freedom and democracy. And while the eyes of the world are on leaders, we can never lose sight of the human cost of conflict. Innocent people, including children, are now facing violence and chaos. In these dark hours, Canada's message to the people of Ukraine is this. You are not alone. We are standing with you. For Canadians and permanent residents in Ukraine, your safety and security are now our top priority. We also want to make sure that you can get to safety. We've arranged for safe passage for you and your families at the land borders with Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Moldova. We are urgently issuing travel documents for affected Canadians, permanent residents, and their immediate family members. We're also prioritizing immigration applications for Ukrainians who want to come to Canada. And to ensure we can serve people as quickly as possible, today we are launching a new dedicated phone line for anyone at home or abroad with urgent Ukraine-related immigration questions. To Canadians and permanent residents in Ukraine, your safety and security are our top Priority. On a pris des we pour also que want to make sure that you can get to safety. We have arranged for safe passage for you and your families at the land borders of Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Moldova. We are urgently issuing travel documents for affected Canadians, permanent residents, and their immediate family members. We are also prioritizing immigration applications for Ukrainians who want to come to Canada. And to ensure that we can serve people as quickly as possible. Today we are launching a new dedicated phone line for anyone at home or abroad with urgent Ukraine-related immigration questions. Last night I spoke with Ukrainian Canadians at the Ukrainian Canadian Congress board meeting. I told them that President Putin has underestimated the strength and unity of democratic allies and partners and he has underestimated the strength and resolve of Ukrainian people. These are traits of Ukrainian Canadians, too. You have helped build this country. You are proud of your, country, your culture and your heritage, and you don't back down. Well, neither will Canada. Our support for Ukraine, for democracy, and for human rights remains unwavering. Thank you very much. I'll now 